Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, video lesson. In this lesson, we are going to talk about how does the third charge is going to impact the force between any of the two charges. Let us imagine there are two point charges Q1 and Q2 in vacuum separated by a distance r. We know because according to Coulomb's inverse square law between them there is a force as we have discussed earlier 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 by r square. Each charge experiences the same force both of them are being repelled with this, this magnitude of the force, but these two forces are not going to cancel because they are acting on different uh, bodies. My question now is what happens if I have kept a Q3 here in between them somewhere if I have kept a Q3. My simple question is does presence of that Q3 changes change the force between first two charges. So, my simple question is does a third charge change the force between any of these two charges? My simple answer is no. The third charge is not going to affect the force between any of the two charges that remains the same. F between Q1 and Q2 remains the same. Then what changes? Let us try to identify. Now on Q2 earlier because of the Q1 there is a force. This is F on Q2 by Q1. But once if you start keeping this Q3, this Q3 also applies a force because all are positive charges that is also a repulsive force this is F on Q2 due to Q3 means what there is an extra force acting on Q3 so what is going to be changed as a result total force acting on Q2 is more now it is not same the effective force on Q2 has got changed but the force between the first and second is not changed we can as visualize we can understand that uh, between them there is a certain angle theta so we know how to calculate F resultant because it is a vector using the parallelogram law of vectors I can write a formula root of F1 square plus F2 square plus 2 F1 F2 cos theta. We can find a resultant force, we can find its direction and all that can be all done with the vector algebra. It simply says if there is multiple charges acting on a system F effective or F resultant force acting on any system has to be identified as not a simple scalar sum because they are the vectors force is having both magnitude and direction we have to use the vector loss of addition and find out the resultant force acting on it. This is called something like a principle of superposition. So, to find out the total force on any charge when multiple charges are there around it, we have to use this principle of superposition and find the total force. But the simple thing is the presence of a new charge is not going to make any effect or impact on the force between the existing two charges. Thank you for watching and uh, we will be continuing further, right.